How weird can hair products get? I've tried a fair share of hair products back in my day, which is currently, currently is the day. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but none of them have ever been quite shockingly weird. And I'm not saying that in a bad way whatsoever. I love weird products. I think they are genius, some of them. Some of them are so beyond weird that I'm just, my curiosity gets the best of me and I'm like, what the hell is it I need to know? And for the most part, I thought that I, I understood the hair world. I understood the hair game, the hair industry, what kind of products are on the market. I understand there are some, you know, unique ones, but I thought I had a good grasp of what was on the market. Except, <laughs> I was on Cult Beauty the other day. I was shopping for myself, wasting my money. And I'm like, let me see what the hair section kind of holds because I'm interested. I'm a hair person, I like to know what there is. And when I clicked on it, there was, you know, there were your Olaplex, your Way, your different kind of products. And then I came across some <laughs> weird products. Like weird to the point that I haven't thought of that. And I'm, I'm looking at them and I'm like, what, what is this? Because they're so beyond weird. So I kept scrolling and I kept scrolling and I was like, oh my God, there are so many that I'm like, my curiosity is getting the best of me. My bank account will suffer, but my mind will not. My hair might though, hopefully not. Anyways, I bought them all. <laughs> this is my order from Cult Beauty. I spent way too much money on this video. I won't lie. I needed to know what these products do, why they exist, who came up with them. Let's jump straight into this very bizarre video. R & Co dry shampoo paste. I don't know about you, I'm familiar with dry shampoo, I'm familiar with the brand, I'm familiar with paste. Never in my career, never in my life have I ever heard or seen a dry shampoo paste. And when you look at it, it's even weirder. It feels solid, like genuinely, there's nothing coming off. It's dry as heck and I can't imagine for the life of me how on earth this will work as a dry shampoo. In a paste, you kind of have to like work it in is my expectation, right? I don't know. Um, I haven't washed my hair in quite a few days, so I feel like it's adequate for this. So let's just, let's just go into it. it smells nice. It's like literal wax. It's so crumbly. Let's just try it. I have no idea how I'm supposed to apply this. Oh, it's malleable. Okay, let's just go for it. Let's do this again because I'm fairly sure I'm messing it up. Even though the instructions just say, rub a small amount between your fingertips and apply to second day hair. Okay, rub between my fingers for like fourth day hair. I can't tell if this works. I gave decent volume. This product both works and doesn't work. It does say that it can give a nice volumizing texture, which I do think it did. The only thing is that it almost feels like it added shine into my hair and not taking it away. I don't know, man. This just, this looks like a, it, it looked fun as a thought, but in practice, you don't rub dry shampoo in. It does not work. It, that is not how dry shampoos work. So it's okay to give volume. It's not the best in the dry shampoo aspect. So we do. Color wow, baby. Give a wild guess what you think this product does. Just give a wild guess. I'm gonna tell you its name and then try to guess what it does. Dream filter for picture perfect color. From the name of the product, can you give a wild guess what it's meant to do? Because when I saw it, I had no idea. But then I read it and I was even more confused. Hear this out. For pre-shampoo mineral remover, it filters out color destroying minerals and unveils a brighter color. I love it. I love it already. I did not know that was a thing. Spray liberally and evenly on dry hair before shampooing. Wait one to three minutes and then shampoo. Cool, let's give this a go. I feel like that saturated my hair well enough and now I'm assuming that with the shampoo, the, the color officially gets brighter. Mm, I like it. It smells fun, but like a hair salon. Makes sense. This next product is the product that I came across on the Cult Beauty website that made me go, what the f is this sh I've heard so much about this brand, not necessarily great things. This is by Goop, Gwyneth Paltrow's confusing beauty brand. Lifestyle brand? I don't know. I first heard of them when I heard of the iconic 
ish vagina candle that was sold for $75. It definitely made headlines, not necessarily sure if they were great headlines. So when I saw that they had hair products, I was like, I need to see what this is all about. When I actually read what the hair product was, I was even more confused because it doesn't quite make sense to me. And hear me out on this. Goop Beauty G-Tox Himalayan Salt Scalp Scrub Shampoo. Say that five times quickly. So I've obviously heard of Himalayan salt scrubs. They are pretty versatile. You've seen them all over spas. You can do them mainly on your body. I don't think you can do them on your face. I've certainly never heard of it applied to hair. It is meant to be a scalp scrub, but also a shampoo, but it's also meant to detox or G-Tox your hair. So far, this is both very confusing and also very fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet my hair really quickly and then be back to see if this thing actually works and if it's going to literally cause us pain. It feels like a DIY home treatment that I mixed up years ago. What if I were to spray more water on it? Because so far this is not working. There's not much of a lather building up and I'm just making a massive mess of my studio because it's shooting the rock crystals everywhere. I used up like a fifth of the product and I feel like it got me nowhere. It smells so much like a spa and it's such a weird consistency. It's like a salt scrub that's also creamy. All I'm thinking is this is meant to be applied on the scalp, right? And it's meant to be exfoliating that, except the harshness of these, of the salt can't be doing good to the hair. Like this for sure is causing like friction, wear and tear. I need to go rinse this off before it damages my hair. Oh my God. I'll be back. Oh, why does it smell so minty? I like it, but it's confusing. That was unsatisfying. I'm fairly sure my hair is still absolutely full of little salt chunks. <laughs> because I do not feel that that was a sufficient shampooing because there was no lather and I just felt like I was damaging my hair. It's time to go in with a second shampoo, second rinse, rinse and repeat. I'm going in with the Nature Lab Tokyo Perfect Repair Shampoo, color protecting, sulfate free and paraben free. So far, that sounds normal. And it is, it is absolutely normal. I bought it literally because of the packaging. <laughs> it was pretty inexpensive. So far, this was the most expensive at 35 euros or 40 something dollars. This I think was 11, which isn't that bad. And it looks so cute. I just know for a fact that the minute this runs out, I'm gonna be just refilling it constantly because it's so, Cute! I also love this action of the shampoo bottle. You don't see that very often. It smells nice. It smells like shampoo, but it smells nice. That's it. That's what I was looking for. Oh my God. Look how beautifully it lathers. Oh my God, I'm loving this shampoo so much. Why is my hair so faded? Which one of you is stripping my hair color? I think it was goop. Let's do mohawk. Ooh. Look how well it lathers. Oh my God. <laughs> Look how much boobles there are. Loving my boobles. 10 conditioner time for conditioner i went for something a little pricier a few months ago i was on a tiktok and this guy was uh talking about this brand new very luxury skincare line that invented a brand new patent their tfc8 patent that was apparently miraculous and was revolutionary and everything i went to check them out on their website they seemed very overpriced i left it at that ever since then for many, many, many months, um, I've been getting bombarded with their ads nonstop. So I was like, I'm gonna give in and give them a go, just out of spite. I got the Augustinus Bader, the conditioner with TFC 
8 technology that is apparently revolutionary. One of the priciest conditioners ever. 45 euros, so around $50. <laughs> apparently, celebrities absolutely love this. It is replacing the Lamer, Lamer, Lamer in their skincare game. I haven't heard many people talking about their hair care range though, so I'm kind of excited to try that. So let's see this. This just feels cheap now. What is worth 45 on this? I'm a big advocate for good hair care, but I'm also not a big advocate on spending tons on seemingly good hair care because you can get away with good stuff for cheaper. But anyways, let's give this a go, see how this works and rate it basically. Will this be worth the money? Let's find out. How has no one talked about this before? This has one of the worst smells ever. It kind of smells like food or fruit that's been left out for a while and it's getting that sickly sweet smell, but not good. It's not a good smell. It's like rotting or honey, but like very, very honey. I don't like that at all. Oh my God. Do celebrities rub this on their hair? Is this what celebrities smell like? Ooh. Uh, the texture feels nice though. It feels luxurious. Let's try this. If this doesn't perform well, I know I won't be buying it just because the smell is so of putting that it's like, I'm not gonna spend a ton of money on something that smells bad. I wonder what their skincare smells like. Cause their skincare then retails for way more, like their basic V moisturizer, I think retails for around $300, which is insane. Okay, I'm gonna go rinse this off and see how my hair feels. If it doesn't feel like literal lush, I'll be mad. Go! Well, you stay, I'll be right back. I will not lie, that did feel like literal heaven as I was washing it off my health. My hair felt luxe, it felt lush, it felt nice. Now it's time to style as well as add all of the leave-in stuff. I have quite a few products for that, so let's get into it. When it comes to leave-in, I have my holy grail products. However, I'm always on the lookout to try anything else new. This next product was five euros. That's it, that's around seven dollars. So it's very, very affordable. It is weird though. <laughs> This is the Heritage Store Rose Petals Rose Water Vinegar and it's very cheap. It's weird however because of how many uses it has. This isn't a hair product, this is a smooth skin toner, a clarifying hair tonic and it is basically apple cider vinegar with the mother. I don't know what that means. I think that is a, a flaw in translation. I don't know what that means, but essentially it is rose water mixed with apple cider vinegar, two of two things that are very, very good for both skin and hair. When I was younger, one of the things that I learned was that apple cider vinegar was a very, very good after shampoo rinse or after wash rinse because it just sealed up all of the hair cuticle and added that extra bit of shine. This makes sense to me. Directions. Dispense onto cotton pad and gently apply to skin. Apply as a hair rinse or brush to smooth the hair. Very versatile. I don't know if I would use this on my skin. I've never used vinegar on my skin. I've used rose water before, but never vinegar. I am 100% certain it's literally just two ingredients, rose water and vinegar, because <laughs> that's all it smells like. Ingredients. Aqua, water, apple vinegar, rose damasca flower oil, citronelle, cherennial, linalool. Vinegar, all right. It's like flower scented vinegar. <laughs> Next up, remember how we couldn't figure out the first Color Wow product? Give a wild guess what this does. <laughs> this is the Color Wow Dream Coat Supernatural Spray. Once again, when I saw this, I was like, I am intrigued for the sheer reason that I do not know what it is. It is a well, I don't know what it is, but here's what it does. It magically transforms texture and it has amazing humidity proofing powers. 
dryer heat required to activate product. So here's what I, when I saw this on the website, I read a bit about it and here's what I learned. You can uh, avoid frizz two different ways. You can either go at it by trying to neutralize it when you go in with a flat iron, when you go in with certain hair products. You can also go at it by adding a waterproofing coat onto the hair to avoid the water coming in contact with it in the first place. That is what this product does. You spray on the hair and it basically acts as a barrier between the water and preventing frizz. So this is actually very cool. I'm gonna spray it on and see what happens. They need to work on their titles though. Names, whatever, product catalog names because this does not describe what it is very well, very efficiently. It's bad. Once again, it has very similar scents to the first Color Wow product. Very confusing smells. Next up in the line of very weird products. Once again, this is by Nature Lab Tokyo. This thing looks pretty normal. It actually sounded more fun, but I got this literally because of the name and nothing else. Perfect Volume Blowout Jelly. It's also a color and heat protectant, which is really fun because once again, never really seen that in a jelly. Let's give this a go. Once again, it smells insane. So far, Nature Lab Tokyo is one of my favorites. Now I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry my hair. I think I'm gonna go for something pretty basic. I pretty much soaked my shirt throughout this entire process, so I need to dry that as well. So gonna go do that, and then we'll be back to show you the last few products that I have left. Is it just me or did my hair lighten drastically since the beginning of this video? My hair is considerably more blonde. I like it, but also which one of the hair products stripped my hair color so much? Anyways, I love this so much. Oh my God, I love this. Okay, I have two more products before I can seal off this hair transformation. Starting with this one, Color Wow Pop and Lock High Gloss Finish. I don't know why I bought this. This is such a basic, as in it's not a basic product. It's actually very gorgeous, very on similar track to the highlighter, spray on highlighter that I wanted to create. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with this for some shine. Although I have a feeling I bought this literally for that highlighter video and not because of this. So it's very shimmery though. Mm. Smells so nice. All of the shimmer is gone though. Okay. This wasn't the weird one. Last and final product that is very weird and I bought simply because of how it looked. This is an everyday hair oil that is in probably one of the nicest packaging ever. It looks like a perfume because it looks insanely liquidy. But no, it's an everyday hair oil. I have no idea why it's called bread. Don't ask me, I don't know, but I bought it because it looked insanely cute, it looked insanely weird, and it'll go to my collection of really weird looking hair oils. It is free from literally every single harmful chemical, toxin, parabens, whatever. It is just a pure, pure oil that is meant to nourish and enhance any curl pattern. So I'm stating that right now, but I was like, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna give it a go because why not? I have a feeling this has a similar, okay. Oh my God. That is the nicest smelling thing. It smells of strawberries so heavily, but like insanely good. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, I think it looks pretty cute. Overall, I don't think there was any one hair product that was bad. There were some that were just disappointing, but I will say, I don't know which of the products worked, but my hair feels lush, like lush, lush, like bleached twice last week as if forgotten. That's all forgotten. It feels pillow soft. I don't know which of them worked. Genuinely, I don't know. I do know, however, that I have immense shine and my hair feels so nice and it smells probably of a lot of things, but hopefully of this thing. <laughs> I will say, however, that's one of the hair products. I'm not pointing fingers. One of the hair products um, stripped my hair color so much that I'm practically blonde copper now, which is weird because I started with like a rosy color. 
<laughs> so go at this with your own will. I'm very happy to have tried these out. I definitely think I found a couple of favorites. And as much as I absolutely trashed the price point, I do think the conditioner of Agustina's father worked because my hair is soft. I have no leave-in products technically in my hair and my hair is like soft, soft, like virgin hair soft, which is saying something because I'm the furthest thing from a virgin. And always. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna link every single one of the products that I used down below in the event that you want to give them a go. I think there are some very, very cult favorites down there. I think these does definitely deserve some recognition. Probably my favorite brand of all of them has been Nature Lab Tokyo. It is very affordable, very fun. Everything is going to be linked below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you enjoy me, my presence, you want to see more of me, give my channel a lovely little subscribe. Join the Stellar family. And let's create some fun hair looks together. Cute. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a go. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.